Amen. Thank you, little girl. Welcome. All right. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this glorious day. Give us to glorify you. And to praise you and lift you up for who you are and what you've done and what you're about to do. And Lord, I pray that I can step back and let you take control of this service let you take control of my tongue, Lord. And show me what you have to offer this morning, Lord, as well as others. And Pray that I can get in you and stay in you throughout this service, Lord. In Jesus' precious holy name, I pray. Amen. I'm going to tell you before we even get started this morning, I don't have a clue about what we're going to. He's laid so much on my heart this week that I don't know where to start first. And he said just abide in me. And it's, it's funny how. In the middle of the night, he woke me up and he told me, or showed me, what shirt to put on this morning. And I seen myself standing up there before that camera with his shirt on. So I took, I put the shirt on. Now, am I going to preach his word this morning? Or am I just going through the motions of trying to please him through physical things? Or mentally things? Or am I going to please him through spiritual things? I need to do spiritual things. Amen. I need to abide in him. The sayings that he has this morning for me. And you. And as a preacher. I should be able to do that. Because I, he called me. Amen. Praise God he called me. And that's where a lot of times we get it wrong. We think, I'm calling to God. He calls us. Each and every time, He calls you to do a specific thing. He calls you to be saved. He calls you. Because He is first. I'm last. And I should remind myself of that each and every day. Amen. Now let's go and try to find something here. Amen. He's already found it. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Therefore, see, we have this ministry. Wow. As we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by man's faith, man's a station of the truth, commending ourselves to every man conscious in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Come on now. In whom the God of this world has binded the minds of them which believe not, Thus the light of glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, he shineth in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellency, hope you understand what I'm saying, of the power may of will of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And I could go on and on and on what Paul said here in Corinthians. I need to preach the gospel and nothing else. When I stand before this camera, when I stand before God, when I stand before the, uh, you, all should be on my mind is God. Nothing else. Nothing else. All the deadly sins should be wiped out of my mind. I should be relaying a message to you straight from the throne room of God instead of doing it myself. Instead of sugarcoating it or instead of putting things in there that my mind is dreaming up and not his. I need to preach the gospel. Praise God. 
And I'm not going to stand up here this morning. Just hit me. I'm not going to uh, uh, ask forgiveness. We're getting a little loud here this morning. Jesus Christ said, shout it from the rooftop. And if I so be it, if he tell me to get up there and go to hollering, I'm going to do it. Lord knows everybody around here don't want me up on the house, though. Amen? But if he sees fit, I'm getting up there. We got to proclaim the message this morning, not only the preachers, not only the Sunday school teachers, not only the people that take up the tithes and offering, not only the people that are leaders in the church, is what I'm saying here this morning, all needs to be preaching the Word of God and saying, He is Lord. He is all. He is everything. There's nothing else to even come close or compare to Him. Nothing. Nothing. So why in the world am I going to stand up here and preach about something when I got y'all's attention this morning? How in the world am I going to preach of myself when God knows what is right? And God can utter the word that you can understand. I can't. And it just so amazes me how I love God all the time and try to do his will and do his plan. But when I'm sitting there in that chair, or I'm talking amongst people, or I'm in myself, and I'm not up here being a spokesman for God, which I should be all the time, I become a little lax. And I start saying what Armin thinks, and what Armin believes, and what Armin... It don't matter to a hill of beans what I believe, what do you believe, or nothing else. As long we got to concentrate on what he believes. That's right. And what he knows. And what he puts in our hearts each and every day. I mean, years ago, I thought I was, I'd be crazy sitting up there in the bed, laying up there in the bed thinking about what shirt I'm going to wear today. What shirt I'm fixing to put on. And now I say, God's telling me that. Because I, don't, I try not to listen to anybody else. But I do. And I hear complaints day after day after day. And I'm not asking no pity party now. They don't get it. I'm just telling you what's truth. What I'm saying here, I get complaints. Now I get some people saying, what a great job you're doing for the ministry. What you're doing for God. But there's always, there's going to be a chosen few going either or. So what I have to do this morning is what? Preach the word of God and not worry about the people. If Jesus Christ would have worried about them scribes when he was preaching, if he'd have worried about that 10,000 or ever how many it was there before they broke that bread and he was preaching to, if he'd have thought about what each and every one of them were saying behind his back, could he preach the word of God? He, he, he couldn't he preach. Because he would be so concerned about something else. Amen. I know he's per he was perfect. I know he was. But you know he was in the flesh and he thought about things. He thought about things that people said to him. And he had feelings. You know his feelings got hurt. How could the people that praised him one day and put him on the cross next And you know, I'm not trying to justify the people. But imagine this day and time if a man come back and walked this earth and said, I am Jesus Christ. I am the son of the living God. How far would he get down the road before somebody killed him? Or stopped him? Or told him he was nuts and locked him up somewhere? Well, a lot of people say, well, I can go by a feeling. I know if it's Jesus Christ or not. Well, how in the world do we know who is a Christian and who is not? How do we know someone that is sent directly from God or somebody that's not? I'm talking about truly here now. Now, we can speculate all day long, and we can see their actions. And I understand, like somebody said, actions speak louder than words. I understand that. But how in the world can we walk around each and every day saying, I know. I know. 
the only thing we should know is Jesus Christ himself. And he is the living son of the living God. And through the Holy Spirit, we can do all things through Christ's strength to me. Amen. So this morning, I need to preach Jesus Christ, right? I need to preach him crucified. I need to preach him going to the cross for you and I. And I need to say each and every day, I need to go to the cross. Not away from it. Go to the cross. Lay down my sins. Give him what he so desperately wants out of you and I, which is glorification, love, and hope, mercy, all the above. Amen. All my life I've seen preachers. And each and every time I come in contact with them, some of them I was kind of nervous to be around. Because I thought how powerful they were and how knowing they were. And how all they got to do is just say a prayer for me and I'm healed. How I followed the preacher and didn't follow God. How I believed the preacher and didn't know God. How I idolized some preachers and didn't know God. How I wanted to follow each and every one of them and be just like them a lot of them. Maybe. But some of them I was so afraid. And one day it clicked. How can I follow the preacher when I don't have a clue what he's talking about? It's the same way with Jesus Christ. How can I follow him when I don't know what he's talking about? Now I know I'm not supposed to follow a preacher. I won't add that in there, okay. What I'm saying here this morning is I sit there in that easy chair, and I carry on the conversation. Or if I go up to Walmart and want to talk to somebody, or if I just sit around out by myself and thinking, I seem to argue with myself. And I seem to think my way is the right way. And I seem to think all these stuff that's conjuring up in my mind that I'm telling you this morning is straight from the Word of God, but all of it's in the mix. But it's just something about standing up, preaching the Word of God with His authority. He gives me, He gives you the authority to preach the Word of God each and every day to each and every person on this face of this earth. But I don't know about you. At times I have trouble because I start the judging process. I try to judge before He does. Well, I can go and I pick and choose and I can tell, talk about stuff in this Bible and how they, in one place it says judge not and the other place it says we have authority to judge. So how do I filter all that out? Ask him. Don't ask somebody else. It'll only start a bunch of mess. It'll only start turmoil. It'll only start an argument. It'll only start something each and every time. So what do we have to do? Speak the word and then say, I got scripture to back it up? Well, I want to tell you what, 15 people sit down and read the same verse and each one of them, God has laid something on their heart differently. Amen. So how do I, as a preacher, preach the word of God to get it through to people the same way Jesus Christ did when he stood up on that mountaintop preaching to all them people? He was preaching after his father, he said. His father. Come on now. And he was the word of God. And though our Bible says he is the word. He was the word. When it when it when it, it just hit me this morning, I seen that. It says God and the Word and the Holy Spirit. And I never really put the two and two together. He is the Word of God. In this book, in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, in our inner being, in everything. He is the word of living God. So if I talk after the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, how are we going to say it? I'm speaking after the word of God. 
I'm speaking after straight out. It's coming straight out of God's mouth. And if somebody gets confused, even myself, or somebody gives me some flack over it, what should I do? Don't say I'm right. Say he's right. He wouldn't have given it to me if it wasn't the truth. So when I preach, I know I'm preaching the truth if I'm relying on the Holy Spirit. The same way as we talk. The Bible says we might as well, if we're not talking after God, we might as well just keep our mouth shut. That's what the Bible says, amen? So if we're not, if I'm not talking after the Word of God, I need to stand somewhere, amen? We go to church to hear God's Word. We don't go to church to hear Brother So-and-So preach a sermon. Or I don't. And I don't think Jesus Christ wants us to do that. Listen to another man that says so many times here, don't listen to nobody but God. Verse 6 says, chapter 4, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians again says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That pretty much summed up what we were just talking about. Amen. Commanded, God commanded the light to shine. God commanded the light to shine. Am I the only one here that got that? God commanded the light to shine. There was darkness in our lives. There was sadness. There was all the above. And I know there is now. There, I know it is now. If we fall back into it and leave God's light out, but he shines it each and every day and he shows us the way to go. I was going to preach a sermon this morning about control. I was going to preach a sermon about judge, judging. I was going to preach a sermon just on and on and on. I was going to preach a sermon. But God said, uh -uh. you get up for that camera, you have some faith and I'm going to tell you what to say. That's what we need to do each and every day. Now I'm about putting myself up on a soapbox. Amen. I'm telling and I'm saying we need to follow God's voice each and every day before we even open our mouth. That's the way to be Christ-like. Amen. Verse 11 says, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. Now all this I'm reading this morning. If you have time, read chapter 4, 2 Corinthians, and, and get in the Holy Spirit and let, let God deliver the message through the Holy Spirit unto you. Because there's some very valuable knowledge in this right here. I mean, it says here we have trouble on every side. Oh, Paul went through some stuff, you know. All of them But Paul, he was killing Christians in the name of God. He thought he was doing the right thing, killing people. And God changed him. God called him to be a preacher after all that. So that falls right back to the category of what I judge today, is it going to be the same tomorrow? What I judge next week, is it going to be sin free after that the world is changing God's not 
And as you have noticed, and we have noticed that the world is changing each and every day for the worst. And the Bible speaks of it at the end times. Amen. Verse 16. Well, let's go to verse 15. For all things are for your sakes that the abundance of grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God for which cause we faint not but through our outward man perish. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. If we let it. If we let it happen. We are renewed day by day. But it says the outward man perish. And I'm telling you here today, you can't see what's on the inside, but you see what the example somebody's leading on the outside. Amen. And that's all we got to go by. That's all we got to go by. So if I come up here, oh Lord, I don't want to say anything. <clears throat> If I come up here with my hair pink, my head shaved, and I know some cancer victims out there, I understand that losing their hair, I understand it. But if I do it to my own accord because I want to, why don't I want to change something that's perfect? Yeah, here goes this old preacher right back into the to the realm again because God's telling me to do it. Why in the world do we ever want to change something that he made perfect? This earth, look at it. Is it perfect? He gave Adam control over all the fish in everything. And what did God do? What did Adam do with it? He turned it into briars and thistles. Because <laughs> he wanted to be in control. He wanted to eat that apple, amen? Amen. Now, I want to ask you a question this morning. It's going to throw you through a loop because it did me. Is God in control of this earth? Is God in fully control of this earth? I understand it allows things to happen. And I, I understand that he's in, uh, he can make things happen at a drop of a hat. He, he, but would he tear up something that is perfect? No, he'd allow it to happen. So we're not following God. We're tearing up something that's perfect, right? We're tearing up something that he made. I mean, it shows each and every day on the news and everywhere else how this world is going to hell in a handbasket because of people, because of choices. Because of being in control. And as we were talking this morning, the world always follows the leader. Amen? So who's in control? I ask you this morning, who is in control? Did he give Adam control and turn around and walk away? Now we come back and check on it. And old Adam done messed up everything. He's standing up there with a naked as a gay bird. He found a fig leaf put on. So he took something perfect and made it imperfect. He made something that God made and said that it was good and destroyed it. Wouldn't it be nice to walk out to the garden and it would be nothing but tomatoes or watermelons or something growing. No grass, no nothing. Just beautiful, big old watermelons. But we can't have that. And we always, in turn, blame it on Adam. Adam started it. We're trying to finish it. 
We're trying to make something happen that's going against God's will, God's love, God's grace, God's mercy, everything we're going against. And I have to preach it because he's telling me to preach it. I have to say what he's telling me to say or I can't be a preacher. I could be a so-called preacher, but I got to preach the word of God and I got to preach what he's telling me to say in order to be God's mouthpiece. He don't need me, but he chose me. Just like he chose you to regroup Go back. And I breaks my heart to no end on how a lot of things we messed up we can't fix. I mean, all these people that have these sex changes. And don't have what God give them anymore. And now they can't fix it. Now they can never go back to what they were. I put a tattoo on my arm. I had one put on there. I didn't do it. Well, anyway, there's a tattoo on my arm. I wished it was gone every day because I'm not living in that time period I was back then. I'm not living in that Satan-filled room again no more. Amen? So I want to be. It's just one of my hang-ups. I don't want to go to heaven with marks on my body. But I can't change it. And I know it's a many person, whether they want to confess it or not, Saying here today, I wish I was back like I was. I wish my body was able to produce children. I wish I was able to be called a woman again. God said, I'm going to take a rib out of Adam and I'm going to put it into Eve. And she's going to be his helpmate. Where did all that go? What are we living now? Are we contradicting the Bible? Are we going against the Bible? Are we not preaching the word of God because of people that's coming to my church have done things to the body that God frowns on? And I don't care what it is. Not only the body, but anything we tamper with Is going against God's word, God's love, God's everything. He loves you. He loves you. But the love he has for each and every one whew, is, is you to be saved. That's love. He sent his one and only son to go to the cross so you and I can be saved. That's love from God. And everything else is around that. But that's the center. That's the core. That's the reason. And we can say love all day long, but unless we put Jesus Christ going to that cross in there, there is no love. There's no love. God showed his love. God produced his love. God said, let there be love. So I'm the one that's not a loving, amen? Unless I truly confess and say, Jesus Christ is my Savior. That's love. That's the reason I have preached many, 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 many times what the Bible says. You can only draw love from God. Nothing else. It's kind of like what the... I'm getting ready to close, I promise you. It's, kind of, it's what the Bible says about money, you know. Or possessions. You're going to either love one or the other. You're either going to love God or that. And let's think about that this morning. What is our possessions? I pray.
pray that I can truly say that's my only possession. Let's get that mindset this morning. He is the only thing that matters in his life. Because I tell you, the next tick of this heart would stop. Where would the possessions be then? On handy down. You wouldn't have no more use for it, would you? So in each and every time, let's think about a possession. Let's think about our God. He is my God. He is all to me. Jesus Christ went to that cross for me. Let's say that. Let's think of that. And let's honor that. Thank y'all for coming, but a glorious day in the Lord.